Hello, you've found the First United Methodist Church of Upland, California. I'm standing here in the narthex, uh, coming out from the cold. It's actually Thursday now. We record ahead of time. Uh, it's been a rainy, blustery day. But you know, I love these. We don't get enough of them in Southern California. Uh, so we come out of the cold and it says we gather here with grateful hearts. We haven't been able to gather in this place physically, but we still gather together with grateful hearts. We gather over the distance because we are wrapped in the Holy Spirit. As we worship together this day, may the Holy Spirit truly bind us together as one. Amen. Let's worship together. Good morning. I'm Martha Fisher, in case you forgot who I was. Uh, join me in, in prayer and listen to the, heed the call to worship. Jesus tells us to wake up from our complacency. He commands that we let go of that which binds us. Jesus calls us out of our darkness and into the light. In response to the call of Christ, let us listen for our Lord. Let us receive his healing. Let us follow his voice and live in the light of his presence.
So I'm off for a morning walk. This is my time to be with God, to get my head cleared before school starts, and to get some fresh air. And when you see some leaves, you pray for your family. I can hear a lot of birds. Can't see them too well. They're high up in the trees this morning. So when you hear a bird or see a bird, maybe you pray for something that's really important to you. Mom, dad, grandparents. When you see a flower, pray for those caregivers, those nurses, those doctors, those people who care for others. See, I pray for whoever you want. I saw a lot of worms. Not a lot of bugs. So there's my bug. Take your time. Pray as you walk. It's my time to listen to music and to talk to him. Start my day. Yeah, it's cold. But it's a good way to be able to talk to him. Have a blessed day. Let us lift our hearts in prayer as we confess our failures and lift concerns before our God. Gracious God, we thank you for your deep and everlasting love. We have found that your love never fails, and we know that even in our most fearful moments, you cradle us in your arms like a mother cares for her child. Help us to learn to depend upon you in all things. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We come to our time of prayer, remembering that we pray for each other, prayers of peace. During this time, of course, we have a family and friends who stand in special need of our own prayers. So I ask that you will remember them. Uh, but we also have the names of people in this church that uh, will, be, will be written. 
uh, and we ask prayers for them as well as we share together in, in worship and as we lay our hearts before the Lord. Let us be in prayer. Lord, we lay all these before you, trusting in your mercy and your goodness, knowing that uh, your love is present in spite of all the many, many challenges that we face. Lord, we pray that you would be with our doctors and nurses and teachers and uh, other emergency personnel, that you would surround them with your care and your strength and your spirit that they might be able to uh, continue to have full lives sharing sharing all that they have uh, with those of us who stand in such need. Lord, we give you thanks for the vaccines that are available. We thank you for all those who had a hand in developing them. And Lord, we pray that uh, that our people and the people of, of this nation and around the world would have these available and would use them to protect not only themselves, but their family and friends and others that they might, uh, might be in contact. Lord, we pray that you would use us as instruments of your peace, that you would help us to bring healing and, Lord, that, that we would look uh, out at this world with your strength and, and your love and your mercy. Help us, Lord, to lead lives that, that share your good news. Lord, we each uh, have special needs, uh, special things that we face. Some of us are looking for work. Uh, some of us... Uh, are are recovering. Some of us have uh, been in in surgery and uh, and struggle in the recovery. Lord, we pray for your healing touch. Open our hearts, Lord, that we truly might know that you are present and might rely upon you. We ask these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, "Our Father, who art in heaven." Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. First passage this morning is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of this where there's no food or water, and we detest this miserable food? Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a pole, poisonous serpent, set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The second reading is from the book of John, 
chapter 3, familiar to us. We can say it with me. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. For whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people loved darkness rather than light because of their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come into the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done by God. So ends the reading of the scriptures. Let's again be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you. Lord, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the love that we know in him and through him. Lord, we know that you surround us with your grace. Help us, Lord, to be open to receive that grace and live in, in the light of your love. Amen. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a burglar who at night broke into a house and, and there in the dark had his flashlight shining around to see what he could steal. And a voice said, Jesus is watching. Well, he was startled and shined his light all around. He could see no one. And the voice again said, Jesus is watching. And, and finally he shined it up higher and saw that it was a parrot sitting up on a stand. And he said, uh, uh, oh, are, uh, are you Jesus? And uh, the, parrot, uh, the parrot said, no, I'm Moses. And he laughed and he said, what sort of people would call a parrot Moses? And the parrot said, the same people who named their Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> oh. And there's another story about a, a young man who went to uh, be a preacher, had to go before a selection committee in a church where they tested out their preachers. And he started out and did this with one hand and then preached a wonderful sermon. And at the end, did this with the other hand. And as he talked to the selection committee, they said, oh, that was was fabulous sermon, but what were you doing with your hand? And he goes, Oh, those were quotation marks. It was a stolen sermon. Nicodemus comes by night, in the dark of night, comes to talk to Jesus and find out about him. We're in the third chapter of John. Uh, we've had the, uh, the, the, the miracle at, at Cana of Galilee uh, as the first sign. Uh, now Nicodemus is checking out this new, uh, this new preacher, this new uh, wandering rabbi to hear what he has to say and to question him. He comes at night, perhaps because he doesn't want to be seen, perhaps uh, because he wants to make sure Jesus is alone. But he comes by night also, the night in his soul, out of the darkness, looking for the light. And so that's our, that's our story. Yeah, he comes to Jesus and says, we know that you are from God because of the great works that you do. He wants, they want to know more. And uh, Jesus starts to talk. Uh, and and Jesus, I think, is sort of excited. Now, it doesn't give you those kind of details. But I think as I read it, I see that, that Jesus is really interested. Here's one of the leaders of the Pharisees. So he's 
He's a very learned individual. And he comes to Jesus, and Jesus starts to talk about things in, in metaphors, uh, about, uh, uh, about salvation, uh, talks uh, oftentimes in words that have multiple meanings, uh, but words that then uh, sort of open up new understandings. Uh, he talks about being uh, born of water in the spirit. He talks about being born from above, which is also the word for being born again. But he's using these words because of, uh, because, because of the multiple meetings. You know, born from above by the spirit, born again to have a whole renewed life. Uh, and, uh, and, and the word spirit is the same as the word for wind. And he talks about how the spirit blows where it will. You don't know where it's coming or where it's going, about how we're carried by the spirit. Uh, and, and Nicodemus is more and more confused because he's taking only one of the meanings and not understanding what Jesus is saying. And Jesus says, you are a teacher of Israel and you don't know these things? And it's almost like you can hear the disappointment. Jesus was anxious to be sharing with a, a learned man. And instead, he finds somebody who really doesn't grasp what he is saying. And so Jesus gives today's passage. Uh, today's passage breaks into the story of Nicodemus. Uh, and he says it's like this. Remember in our scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. Remember in the book of Numbers, when Moses was crossing the wilderness with the people, the Exodus, and they sinned against God, and so poisonous snakes were biting them, and they prayed to the Lord. Uh, they prayed, I mean, they asked Moses to pray to the Lord, and, and God said, we'll put a bronze snake on, uh, on a pole. And anybody that looks at the bronze snake, it's the antidote to the poison. They'll be, uh, they'll be, they'll be made whole again. Uh, and, uh, and so that's the, this is the story. And Jesus is, is trying to explain to Nicodemus by this story of the snake uh, and the snake on the pole. That snake would later on be put into the Ark of the Covenant and, and carried by the people after. But, uh, but, but here's this story that's to, to help illustrate. Illustrate what? Illustrate the grace of God. That, that even though the people have sinned, even though they've failed, the grace of God is, is theirs. For simply the looking at it, for simply, simply trusting that the Lord will watch over them. Last week, last week we had a story about, uh, about a snake, the, uh, the one that was uh, from Margot uh, Robbie, who talked about her mother, uh, finding her mother with a snake all wrapped around arms and neck. Uh, and uh, my mom didn't like that story much. We, she watches the, the sermons with me. Uh, and, and, and she looked very, uh, very concerned. And I, you know, said, are you, you know, you don't like that story, do you? She goes, I don't like snakes. She doesn't like snakes. And, uh, and, and, and I can remember when I was uh, a child, uh, we lived in Calexico when I was in elementary years. Uh, and there was a, there was a big mountain called Mount Signal. It was out in the, uh, the, the uh, outside of the, the city. At least it seemed big to me. Uh, I was a small child, and, and we would go out and uh, and and have uh, you know, dinner or picnics around a fire. So we were sitting around the fire and uh, in folding chairs, and my mom says, "There's a snake around here somewhere," and we laughed. We said, "There's not going to be a snake crawling crawling around a fire. The fire they run they go away from the fire." And she goes, "There, there's a snake here," and she pulled her feet up onto the uh, onto the chair and just as she did that a little sidewinder a rattlesnake but a small sidewinder came out and went right towards the fire 
and all uh, and and the whole family jumped up, you know, like crazy, except for except for my mom who sat on the chair, you know, <laughs> calling to my dad, lie bed, you know, because the snake was uh, the the snake was there, the the, the poisonous snake, and we could uh, we in California uh, can empathize with the 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 Israelites crossing the wilderness. Uh, and, and, and depending upon God to see them through in spite of their sinfulness. Uh, and we've been looking at covenants, you know, the covenant of, with, Mo, with Noah uh, with, for all the world and the covenant with Abraham uh, that uh, he and Sarah would have uh, a child, would have a, a great number of descendants, would have the land and would be a blessing to all the world. The coven, the, those, those, that's a covenant. And then last week we saw the Ten Commandments, uh, and that's part of the covenant with, uh, with, with Moses, that the people of Israel would uh, be the special possession of, uh, of God. Uh, and, uh, and so we have a series of, of covenants in our Old Testament. And, uh, and, and today, uh, when when uh, Nicodemus is talking to Jesus. You know, this is that story of the covenant with Moses and them crossing the wilderness and that God would continue to watch over them and continue to watch over them in spite of their sinfulness. We have the Ten Commandments. Uh, and, and the Ten Commandments uh, begins with, I am the Lord your God who took you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And, and so the Ten Commandments are how do we respond to the love of God that's already there? You see, God loved uh, Noah before the rainbow. God loved Abraham uh, before he was separated out from his people and, uh, and led uh, to, uh, to the land of promise. God loved the people of Israel before the Ten Commandments. It's a covenant. It's a promise. But it's a promise that's born in the love of God. And so what Jesus was talking about is that love of God that we have. And, uh, and the promises that grow out of the love of God. It's not like we have to earn the love of God. All they had to do was look at the snake on the pole. And the love was there. The love is available, and uh, and and to live in that love is to is to follow, and uh, and to to know and accept that that love that is already ours. It's already ours. Uh, the story goes on and and includes that that John three sixteen, and uh, and. It's for God so loved the world. We, we, we know that. Uh, we know John 3.16, uh, at least from football games, the guy holding up the sign, John 3.16. I often wonder, what was he thinking? Was he saying, you know, you better, you better figure it out or else you're in trouble? Or was he saying God loves you? Yeah. We don't know. I don't know. But, but it's for God so loved the world that he gave and 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 the the classic word is only begotten son, uh, and it's the word for birth, the the one who was was born, the the one who would show that love of God. And we spoke last week during communion about how that is a, a covenant uh, for for we who are not Jewish that blessing to all the world we believe came with uh, Jesus Christ. And, and so for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would have eternal life. And, and, and too often we look at that uh, and, and, and we think that somehow that means it's punching a ticket to heaven. Uh, the word eternal life did speak of life after death but it also means a life that is eternal, a life that has the quality of the eternal about it. That, 
that God loves us. And, and even when we make mistakes, even when we fail, that love persists. And, and we, we can have a life that's full and rich if we're willing to, to allow Jesus Christ to live in our life. If we allow ourselves to be led, remember he was talking about the spirit and a spirit-led life. If we're willing to be a part of that spirit-led led life, then our life will be full. And, uh, and, uh, and we will be surrounded by grace, even though we don't always see it, the grace is there. Uh, there's a, a book uh, that I haven't read, but I've heard others uh, speak of it. Uh, it's by a guy named John um, Irvin, and it's a prayer for um, a prayer for Owen Meany, which is an interesting name. But it's it's from his own life. It was a real a real young man who was with him in his growing up years. Uh, so uh, John. And Owen were close friends. Uh, and one day they were sitting looking down on the town. And uh, it, was, it was darkening, darker and darker. And as night had completely fallen, uh, he, he said to Owen, he said, there are times when I am not sure that God exists because I can't see him and I can't hear him. And... Owen thought about that for a long time as they looked over the city. And in the middle of the town, there was a park where there were no lights. And it was the park that they would play in. But in the middle of town, there in the middle of this park, there was a statue of Mother Mary with her arms lifted in praise. In praise. They didn't know that that was Mother Mary. And uh, so she had gotten the name, uh, the kids called her, uh, they called her the goalie lady, because uh, the statue with her arms up. And Owen said to John, can you see, do you think the goalie lady is there in the middle of the park? And, uh, and, and John, says, uh, John says, yes, she's always there. And he said, can you see her? And John said, no, can you hear her? John said, no. And Owen said, even though I can't see and can't hear God, I know God is there. And, and you know, that's true of the grace of God. Sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we don't hear it, especially facing some of the challenges that we have faced and continue to face. The challenge is there. And sometimes we don't see the grace that is there as well, that is sustaining us and lifting us up in spite of the challenge. But it is there. We are, we are called on to be open to the moving of the Holy Spirit and the power of God even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it, even though sometimes it feels like we're alone. We are not. And if we will receive that promise, then we will find that our life will be full. We will have eternal life. And I'd like to close with one last story. Uh, comes from a friend of mine from Emmaus, uh, Pastor Wayne. He's the pastor of a small independent church in uh, in Hemet. Uh, he was uh, worked for the uh, telephone company after serving in the service for many years. When he retired, uh, he felt the Lord was uh, telling him to get up and go out and, and start a church. So he works at a small little church that does just incredible ministry with many people who are who are hungry uh, and uh, and and homeless and need clothing there in this little tiny church that the lord provided uh, in somewhat miraculous ways but he told a story 
about uh, when he was a little boy. He grew up the, the child of, of missionaries. And uh, the, his parents uh, would go back to the States. He was in uh, South America. They would go back to the States where to raise money, go to different churches and, and raise money to, to, to fund the, the mission that they had there in South America. And his grandmother lived with them, and so he would stay with his grandmother when his parents had gone back. And uh, she made him bologna sandwiches all the time. And he liked bologna sandwiches, and, and so he got plenty of them. And, uh, and he was... Uh, by himself in the kitchen eating his bologna sandwich. Uh, and uh, he, he ate it and, and, he, and he said, you know, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for my, for my bologna sandwiches. <laughs> and then he added, and thank you for being in my heart. And, and the little boy, when he said that, he, he, felt, he felt a warmth, he felt a nearness, he felt like, uh, Jesus was right there with him as he ate his bologna sandwich. And, uh, and he was just filled, he was just excited about that. He went running over into the, uh, to the other room to see his grandmother. Uh, and, and, and said, said, Nana, Nana, Jesus is in my heart. And he said, she looked up at him and said, that's nice, dear. <laughs> and, and, and she didn't realize that this was this was a, a moment of uh, of the light coming on, the light that would chase away the darkness, the light of knowing the presence of Jesus Christ in his life, and and he still remembers it to this day, thinks back on that whenever he feels alone, and knows that Jesus is in his heart. We are invited by Jesus Christ to be open to the love of God, which is ours. And yes, there might be times when we stumble and fall, but the grace is still there. The grace will sustain us. May we live in that light in the name of our Savior. Amen. Kate will be playing uh, for us, this is a time of meditation and giving yourself to Christ anew. If you would like to give to our church, uh, the address is here for checks or the website for a credit card. Uh, we invite you to give as a part of the ministry that goes on as we uh, look for different ways in which our Lord uses us uses you. Open your life to the Lord and ask that you might be driven by the Spirit, that you might be given a knowledge of that presence of Jesus Christ and that you be sustained. Let's listen together in prayer.
come now to our time of benediction. Uh, this is the season of Lent. Uh, it's a time that is somber, but not necessarily a time that is sad, because we are called on not to, not to beat ourselves up, but to, but to reflect upon our lives and see how God would change us and use us and help us to grow into the light. Our passage uh, this, uh, the end of this third chapter of, of John speaks about, about the light and that those who want to do deeds of darkness don't want to be near the light because it, it shines. But, but when we are people who are living in, in the power of, of God, when we are sharing the love of Christ, we want to be in the light because it shines and uh, and and our our lives can become a witness to Christ let your light your life shine with the light of Christ that you might be one who lives the good news of our savior receive this benediction be the light let that light shine within you. Let your Savior be seen in everything you say and everything you do, that God might be glorified. Amen.